I want you to shout out the name of your favorite fruit as loud as you can. Okay. One, two, three. All right. I heard a lot of different fruits. Uh, I, I think I, I think someone may have said Fruit Loops. Uh, anyway, today we're going to play a fun game that's all about, you guessed it, fruit. Uh, you're going to see some images and words on the screen that are meant to help you guess the name of a fruit. It will be kind of like cracking a secret code. You'll have 10 seconds to crack the code and guess the fruit. Shout it out as soon as you think you know the answer. Let's get started. I'll help you out with this first one. Looks like we have a pine tree plus an apple. What is a fruit name that sounds like both of those things? All right, time is up. Did you figure it out? Pine tree plus apple equals pineapple. Okay, I think you guys have got this down. I'm gonna let you try this next one on your own. Time's up. Did you figure it out? Star plus fruit equals star fruit. Good work. Oh, this next one will be a little trickier. Time is up. Does everybody know what fruit this is? Slime minus the letter S equals lime. Well done. Oh, let's check out this next one. Time is up. Whoa, that was a tough one. Did anyone figure out what fruit this is? Key plus wheat minus the letter T equals kiwi. High five to everyone who got that right. Well, here's the next puzzle. Time is up. If you knew what that animal was, then this one was really easy, wasn't it? The letter C plus antelope equals cantaloupe. Well done. All right, this is our last puzzle for today. Did you figure out this fruit? Beach minus the letter B plus the letter P equals peach. Nice work, everybody. Thanks for playing What's That Fruit? sing and play rock with a little bit of music. So why don't you stand to your feet? We've been talking all week long about how we are treasured. We are priceless to God.
He will fix me. I will call on the name of the Lord. All my life, all I know, God's been good, good to my soul. Mountain high, valley low, I'm gonna sing wherever I go. God is for me. He's not against me. I will hold. at Treasured Kids Camp that we are treasured and we are priceless. And so we're going to sing our, sing our theme song. Priceless Treasure. I am a priceless treasure. God knows me. God hears me. God is my comfort.
great work. Hey, this is a brand new song tonight. See if you can guess what our Bible point's going to be. Check this out. New song. There have been times my heart was sad. guys you can sit down all right you can take a seat boys and girls we have been talking so far this week about treasure seekers and about valuable price list things and you know what archaeologists usually have you ever seen like in a book or, or uh, a map where there's like an x that marks the spot right where you where you're looking for something kind of like like this let's see this picture up on the screen something like that right where that's where the treasure is and x is kind of like a boring picture right i was thinking that if they made a map where like people had to come find me i would probably have like peanut m&ms that would be a good thing to put up instead of the x right so talk with your crews for the next 30 seconds if we were on a treasure hunt looking for you what would the X be? What would you put? Maybe one of your favorite things. Go ahead and take a few minutes, a few seconds to tell your crew leader. So after we just sang that song, did anybody think you know what the Bible point might be tonight? Oh, nobody knows. Okay. All right. So we'll keep talking then. So we have been talking about priceless things, right? Some people use hammers to dig in rock to maybe find treasure, right? Or maybe find something, gems or special things. But God has placed something in the ocean that is another neat, that is another neat treasure that no one's put there before. And that is something, if you know about a clam or an oyster, have you ever heard of those before, clam or oyster? 
they're found in the sea. And did you know that when they get the tiniest little bug or something in them, it really annoys them. Kind of like when you have a bug in your shoe, and you know, a, a rock, a rock, a rock, not a bug. But when the bug gets in that clam, it just irritates and makes it feel so uncomfortable that it starts to create this coating called nacre, and it surrounds the bug because it doesn't like it, and it keeps doing more layers and more layers of this liquid, and then as it hardens, Look at this picture. Look what it forms. A pearl. A nice, smooth pearl. That started out with that really annoying thing in there. But God's natural way of creating a natural treasure. If you found a pearl, that's pretty neat, right? So we all sometimes go to the beach and look for treasures or look for those special shells. But that's a neat, a neat treasure that is not man-made or put somewhere for you to find, but that God made. So I hope maybe one day... You'll find a pearl, or when you see a pearl, you'll remember smooth and soft and how God comforts us. So tonight's Bible point is, God comforts us. That's right. And last night, it was God hears us. And the first night was God knows us. That's right. Great job. Awesome. And our Bible verse for tonight, look at the screen. It says, he comforts. We do this a lot in our songs, don't we? It's like a big hug, comfort. He comforts us in all our troubles. And then you know what? Just tap a friend so we can comfort others. Can you tap someone on the back? Nice. Let's try it again. He comforts us in all our troubles so we can comfort others. And where's that found in the Bible? 2 Corinthians 1, 4. All right, so every night we have a Bible buddy that reminds us of our point. We have a few buddies left. Which buddy do you think remind, would remind us of comfort? Any guesses? Any guesses? Who do you think? You think it's the alligator? I don't know. I think, I'm not sure what the alligator. He doesn't, he wouldn't comfort me very, me very much. What do you think? Not the butterfly. Nope. Nope. Someone over here. What do you think? Your crew leaders? Who do you think? Wilder is a squirrel monkey. Let's see what he's all about. Ready to dig into another day of adventure? Then let's swing into the excitement. This is Wilder, and he's a squirrel monkey. <laughs> that doesn't mean he's related to squirrels. Not even close. Well, they do both live in trees, but that's about all they have in common. Wilder is actually related to marmosets, tamarins, and capuchin monkeys. They're one of the smallest monkeys, only weighing around two pounds. That's about the same as, mm, three cans of soda. Wilder may be small, but you'll always find him with friends. You could spot squirrel monkeys playing in the trees throughout Central and South American rainforests. Treetops are the best playground. Wahoo! Monkeys like it so much up here that some days their feet never touch the ground. God gave him great balance and a long tail that helps a bunch. Wilder's tail is what you call prehensile. That means it's awesome for balancing on tiny branches but he can't use it to hold things. Some monkey troops can be as big as 500 monkeys. Wow, that's a super troop. Hanging out with so many friends keeps monkeys safe. They can all make a bunch of noise if a predator like a snake or a jaguar is around. Wilder likes starting his day with a good breakfast of fruit, but later in the day, he might snack on some bugs or spiders. Mmm, yum. When Wilder was a baby, his mom took care of him until he could take care of himself. She got him food, taught him how to find food, and sometimes carried him around when he got tired. Wilder's mom has soft fur that's comforting when things seem big or scary. Does your life ever seem big or scary? 
Do things leave you feeling worried? Do you ever need a friend to make you feel better? Sometimes you just need a comforting shoulder to hug, to cry on, or someone to listen. You are treasured by God. He is always there to comfort you. God gives you peace, reminders of his love, and friends and family. Those are gifts from God, comforting us with his love in hard times. And the Bible tells us another reason God comforts us. He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. God lovingly comforts you, and you can pass that along to others. God comforts you. You are treasure. treasure. Hey, look who's here. It's our friend, Dr. Deeringstone. She loves gold, so let's give her a glittery gold welcome like this. Hi, everyone. Wow, even our glittery welcome didn't even make you smile. Didn't you find the gold you were looking for? No, my treasure tracker broke, so I went to the village market and bought this gold-sniffing parrot. Except he hasn't found anything yet. He's not even sniffing. Maybe he's asleep. Um, I don't think that's the problem. You mean he's sick? Hang on, little buddy, I'll get you to the vet! No, no, I mean, he's not real. Someone sold you a stuffed parrot. This isn't a gold-sniffing parrot? I'm afraid not. This treasure hunt is going from bad to worse. My treasure tracker blows a fuse. My gold-sniffing parrot is a fake. What's next? What else could go wrong? I need a hug. I'm sorry you're not having a very good day. Me too, but... This hug is nice. You know whose comfort is even better than a hug? God's. Me and my friends were just talking about how God comforts us when we're feeling sad. Maybe you're right. Maybe the real treasure here isn't gold or diamonds or jewels. Maybe it is something else. Now you're getting it. But just in case it is gold or diamonds or jewels, I'm going to keep looking. Have a great day, new friends. Maybe I'll try a gold-sniffing snake this time. Poor Dr. Diggingstone. At least she's getting closer to finding the real treasure. I hoped we can see her tomorrow so she knows that she's priceless to God. Welcome back to day three of KidVid Cinema. I'm really glad that we can come back each day and learn more about God and see awesome stories about a kid just like you and me. But first, let's talk about our Bible verse today. It comes from 2 Corinthians 1.4. He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. God comforts you and he wants you to comfort others and share his love. Isn't it cool? It also reminds us of our Bible point. God comforts you. You are treasured. Let's watch today's video and see how God used kids like you to bring comfort to other people. It's been a difficult time as people all over the world deal with coronavirus. Through the struggles, we've seen some awesome ways that people share God's love. Some communities even drive their cars around to make parades. We found some amazing kids who've been shining God's love through these hard times. Some kids are helping by making colorful masks. Others are opening up their backyards for neighbors to gather. Let's meet a few of these cool kids who are bringing comfort. First, we're going to meet Ben. He uses his musical talent to share God's love. During the coronavirus shutdown, I FaceTime my grandparents every day to give them a music concert. I hope this song gives you guys hope. also bakes cookies and makes cards with his family to cheer up people in town. Music and cookies are a great way to spread God's love. But there are so many other ways. Here's Sophie. She used art to bring joy to her neighbors. Go ahead. What did you paint here, Soph? A cross. 
Why did we paint it on our window at the front of our house? Because we wanted, what is it called again? Encourage? Encourage. Who? Pear. The people who is walking by. Sophie also delivers bags of donations to members of her community. And then there's the Prada family. With their church, they deliver food to people in need. It was great to be able to serve with the people of all ages. It felt really great to know that I, what I did was making a difference in somebody's life. I loved be, being able to be part of the kids' tent during the food drive through We got to give kids an arts and crafts kit and some snacks and sweets. But the best part was getting to pray for them as they start their new school year. Yeah, it was awesome to pray for them. Yeah, that was so cool. Look at all these people these kids could help. Food and prayer definitely bring comfort when you're sad. Now let's head to Atlanta, Georgia to meet brothers Riley and Bo. What we have been doing this season to help people who have been affected by the pandemic, we have to put, put together bags of arts, of art supplies and snacks, and then we've given them to people in the local area who have been affected by this pandemic. Also, we have been, um, we've been making signs for teachers to know how much we love and appreciate them. Bye. Bye. We found a cool kid who created a VPS in her backyard. Hi, my name is Evangela and I'm nine years old. And my favorite part about Gerd VBS is that they have amazing songs that I can sing and dance to. But during COVID, me and my family and lots of other kids couldn't attend the VBS. So I decided to write my own VBS called Backyard Adventure because we're stuck at home all day. It was supposed to be just for me and my family. But then we, we shared it to a lot of churches on the West Coast. So now kids like me and my brothers can have fun and learn about Jesus. She even made her own Bible memory buddies for her backyard BBS, like Paige T. Pigeon and Heather H. Hascat. God comforts us when life is hard and we can pass along his love and comfort to others who are hurting. In the Bible, the book of 2 Corinthians says, He comforts us in all our troubles so we can comfort others. I wonder how you can bring comfort to people in your neighborhood. Whatever you do, you'll be helping others know that God comforts you. We hope you're inspired to spread God's love and make a difference in your community. God comforts you. You are treasured. Wow, what a cool story. I thought it was amazing how many different ways kids found to comfort others during the COVID-19 pandemic. What's one idea from this video that you wish you thought to do? I think it was really cool that people painted their windows to encourage others. What are some ways that you reached out to help others in need? My mom and I brought groceries and delivered them to a sick family who had COVID. I bet you have done some kind things to help others too. I have one more question for you. How did someone else show comfort to you during the pandemic? When our family had COVID, my aunt brought us some delicious soup and breadsticks. Sometimes we may feel sad or discouraged, but God comforts you. You are treasured. Today's Bible buddy, Wilder, helps us remember that God always comforts us. Wilder is a squirrel monkey, and the Bible verse is printed at the bottom. I want you to remember to keep watching for God, just like our bracelet tells us. You can see God through nature or see him in action in answering our prayers. Always remember that God comforts us. Let's thank God for that. Dear Lord, thank you for your comfort. I pray for everyone who is hurting or feeling sad that they will feel your comfort. And I pray that we can show others your love too. In Jesus' name, amen. See you all next time. Welcome to Imagination Station. I'm happy to see you here. You won't believe the surprises we have in store today. We're gonna have so much fun together. But before we get started, you know, I have to ask, did you bring your imagination today? Uh-oh, looks like some of you might have forgotten. I can tell that you're definitely going to need it today. I was talking with my friend, Wilder the Squirrel Monkey, earlier. I think you've already met him. 
Wilder was telling me something surprising. You know, he really doesn't like to brag, but squirrel monkeys are some of the cleverest monkeys out there because they have such big brains. Not only are they super cute, but they're also super smart. They can think fast on their feet. Are you fast and clever? Let's find out. Everyone hop up. I'll point one direction, but you can only hop in the opposite direction. So if I point this way, you'll hop the other way. If I point forward, you'll hop backward. Ready? Let's try. Well, you certainly are pretty fast on your feet. You must have big brains too. Let's see if you can go even faster. Wow, you are clever and fast on your feet. I think even Wilder would be impressed. Now that your imaginations are up and running, let's look at our talk starter question for today. Squirrel monkeys live with their friends. Do you think squirrel monkeys live in very large groups called troops? Or with just one or two other squirrel monkeys in squads? Talk about that now. Okay, let's get that drum roll going so I can reveal the amazing answer. And the answer is squirrel monkeys, like our friend Wilder, live in large troops. Their troops may have as many as 500 monkeys. Wow! But troops are usually smaller, with around 50 to 60 little Wilders running around. Still, that's a lot of squirrel monkeys. Now that I know you're fast on your feet and clever, I have something I think you'll be very interested in seeing. In fact, it's a mystery surprise. But don't be nervous. Today we're learning that God comforts you. You are treasured. This is my mystery bag. A friend gave it to me and said that inside is something some people are afraid of. Hmm, other people might not want to get too close and other people don't mind it at all. I'm curious and a little nervous. Do you think I should reach in and see what it is? It sounds like there's moving around in there. <gasps> Maybe I woke it. Can you hear that? My friend said that some of these bite, but he was pretty sure it wasn't one of those. Oh, I'm a little nervous, but you know, it'll probably be fine. What do you think? Should I reach in and touch it? I'm gonna try it. Ready? One, two, three. It's pokey and hairy and leggy. But boy, was I worried. What a comfort it is to know that there's nothing but wire and some fluffy stuff. But I felt nervous about reaching inside that mystery bag. When you feel nervous or afraid, God comforts you. You are treasured. We just experienced something called anticipation. When I anticipate something or I get nervous, sometimes my palms get sweaty. That makes me wonder, when have you been nervous? Talk about that with whoever you're doing VBS with today, or just think back on a time you felt really nervous.
brains get busy when we feel nervous about something. Whether we're anticipating something good, like an amusement park ride, or something unknown, like a mystery critter inside a bag, our bodies have a physical reaction. We can get sweaty palms, wobbly legs, sweating, increased heart rate, and even a stomach ache. But you know what? When we feel anxious or nervous, we can trust God to be there for us. We can give our worries to God because God comforts us. You are treasured. Now it's time to learn about our sciency fun gizmo. Hmm. Here's something else that might make you feel a little nervous. Let's take a look at this package. Warning, caution, danger. Do not open. Hmm, sounds intriguing, maybe a little scary. I wonder what's inside. This is called an alarminator. That means it might cause us alarm. It's mysterious, but you know what? We can give our worries to God. Who wants to see what it is? I hope nothing jumps out from inside. That definitely caused me some alarm. The Alarminator is a fun way to remind you that even when you're scared or nervous, God comforts you. You are treasured. Let's make some Alarminators you can use to make your friends and families experience anticipation. Get yours out of your treasured student pack. Follow along, pausing the video to give you more time for each step. First, you'll decorate the envelope with lots of cautions and warnings. Inside the flap, you can write our Bible point. Then, you'll flatten the rubber band and poke each end through a hole in the plastic compass. Next, loop the ends of the rubber band around each end of the C-shaped piece. Make sure to keep the compass perfectly in the middle with the same amount of rubber band showing on each side. Finally, twist the compass about 15 times. Then, slip it inside the envelope and fold the envelope closed. You're gonna have so much fun surprising your friends and family in a way that makes them sweat a little. But your Alarminator is harmless fun. There's no danger here. It's a good reminder that we can always trust God to be there for us. When you're anxious or worried, God comforts you. You are treasured. And when you're not using that fun gizmo, keep it in its bag for safekeeping. We'll add the Try This at Home sticker to remember how it connects with God's Word. And I'll see you tomorrow for more surprises and fun. If you thought yesterday's totally true Bible adventure was a little dangerous, we've time traveled ahead and things are even worse. It's been years since David was king. King Hezekiah's on the throne now and he's in trouble. We're all in trouble. There's a nearby country called Assyria and they're our enemy. In fact, the Assyrian king sent his army to conquer Jerusalem. They're outside our city walls right now. And there are way too many of them for us to fight. They have chariots, they have axes, they have spears, they have bows and arrows, and they have really bad attitudes. When they conquer cities, they take everything worth anything and burn the rest. And they're mean to the people in the cities too. King Hezekiah gave them lots of gold and silver so they'd go away. 
But here they are, and they're not leaving. In fact, here's what they said to our leaders. <coughs> hey, Jerusalem, just give up already. You have words, but we have a huge army. Who do you think is going to help you? Another country? Your God? No country can stand against us, and your God doesn't care about you. When we have your city surrounded, you'll starve. You'll die of thirst. Give up now, and we'll let you live. Your God didn't save any other cities we conquered, and God won't save you. Open your city gates and come out right now. It's your only chance. King Hezekiah hasn't opened the gates, so I think we'd better take cover before the Assyrians start chucking rocks over the walls. It's not safe to stay out here in the open. Take a few seconds and find a good hiding place behind a table or a chair or under a blanket. Stay nearby though, so you can still hear and see me. We need to stick together. Hurry, an attack could come at any moment. Now that you're hunkered down, let me ask, do you think your hiding place will really help if a giant rock is tossed on you? If arrows come at you? If a spear is tossed in your direction? How about if a chariot comes roaring through, pulled by two giant horses? You can come out of hiding. A blanket or chair or table isn't gonna help. This scroll is full of mean, hurtful words and lies. Maybe you've had someone say things like that to you, or you felt worried that something bad was going to happen. Let's try something. In a minute, I'll give you time to find some paper and a pencil so you can make your own bad news scroll. You'll write about a hard situation or draw a picture of something that scares you. I'll give you two minutes. When King Hezekiah got bad news on a scroll, he took it to God. God loves you and always hears what you say. 
So let's try that. King Hezekiah took the bad news scroll and laid it in front of God. Here's what I want you to do. Kneel and lay the open scroll out in front of you. He prayed something like this. Why don't you whisper the words after me? As you do, think about what you wrote on your paper. God, you have all the power and might. Hear our hurting hearts. Rescue us. Amen. Now whisper out a word that describes how it feels to lay your worries or fears before God. God hears you. You are treasured. God heard King Hezekiah too. He sent comforting words through the prophet Isaiah. Here in the Bible times, prophets tell us messages from God. Isaiah told Hezekiah, God says not to worry about those Assyrian bullies. God will defend you and take care of them. As for you and your people, you're going to be okay. In fact, soon you'll have plenty to eat and your nation will grow. When has someone comforted you with words? Take a minute to think about a specific time. If you're watching with friends or family, talk about it. God comforts you. You are treasured. Let's thank God for his comfort in hard times. Roll up that paper to make a scroll. Tape it closed. As you do, thank God for covering and wrapping you up with his comforting love. Can I tell you a secret? I know how this whole Assyrian mess turns out because it's here. In the Bible, in the book of 2 Kings chapter 19, after comforting King Hezekiah with the promise that God would fight for him, God kept that promise and wiped out the Assyrian army. When you look at your scroll, remember that a mighty, powerful, and loving God stands with you and treasures you. All right, let's stand. Everyone.
Thank you, guys. You can take a seat, everyone. Our Bible point tonight has been God comforts us. Nice. Awesome. So our Bible buddy tonight was Wilder, a squirrel monkey, and he reminds us that God comforts us. And our Bible verse for tonight, let's do it together, everyone. Let's do the motions. He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. Pat someone on the back, right? Our friends we can comfort. And that's 2 Corinthians what? 1, 4. Awesome. And everybody's eyes up here. Everybody's mouths are zipped, right? Shh. You don't want to miss out what's happening. So everybody's eyes up here. I'm going to do something super cool tonight. Ooh, you guys are doing so good. All right, so we have been talking all night about God's comfort, right? When do we need God's comfort? One person. Way back there. Yes, I see you. Yep, yep, you. Savannah? I think that you all had too much sugar. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So have you ever heard of when someone is blue? What does it mean when someone's feeling blue? Shh. Shh. Oh. Shh. Raising hands. Right here. You're right in the front. They're sad. I just asked somebody, what is it? What does it um, mean to feel blue? And he said, it's sad. We've been talking about comfort all night long, right? And sometimes, as we get sad, sometimes we have other feelings inside of us that might be like worry, right? Have you ever been worried? Raise your hand if you've been worried. Raise your other hand if sometimes it makes your belly hurt. Raise your other hand, I mean, you know, use the other one, if it makes you feel shaky. Okay, okay. So this, this is Mr. Blue up here. And when he's sad and worried, we can sometimes feel like this. One second. I'm gonna find the right piece. Okay. Shh, everyone's looking. Listen, listen. Sometimes when we feel worried and sometimes when we're feeling scared, where we feel like we can't eat or we're so concerned and worried, it kind of feels like this sometimes, like, what are we going to do? I'm overwhelmed. I'm, I need comforting, right? But I'm just all by myself and I don't know what to do. So with your cruise for 30 seconds, if you have a friend that is feeling like this, what do you do to comfort them? Talk to your crew leader. Talk to your crew leader. 30 seconds. It's okay. It's okay. Hold that down. I know you just gotta watch it. But if you notice his small, smooth bubble, it's not blue, is it? Okay. So you just walk. You just walk to the edge and. But watch the bubble. Look how clear. There's no blue, but just watch. It's like soft and kind of, it's just comforting to watch, isn't it? And oh, and guess what happens? When we go to God in our troubles, right? He brings peace to us. And do you know that he can help our fears and our worries disappear when his peace comes? Cr 
true leaders. Are there any of you out there that have ever experienced oh, God's peace? Raise your hand. And it's comforting, isn't it? To know that he can help our fears just disappear, right? I know. You got to be patient. Mm. These bubbles are cool, but oh, look at that. You see that? Nice, huh? No, because you know what? Shh. See how it's shrinking? That's like the peace of God. It just comes and comes and comes. Whoa, Dominic. Whoa. Pretty cool. And, and look at I just love how it shrinks because... As you keep praying, you feel the peace of God and comfort of God, and then eventually, watch that bubble just go away. Oh, there's a little one over there. Oh. You guys are doing an excellent job listening. I'm so proud of you. Crew leaders, you're doing a great job. All right, we'll do one more here. Oh, for Dominic. We'll see. We'll try one more, and then we're going to... Move on with some of our fun stuff. Shh. Ah. It's the best thing when God comforts you in your fears, right? Awesome. Catch that last one? Ooh. Okay. So cool. Throw it up in the air. Ooh. Awesome. God comforts us. Oh, I'm telling you what. That is awesome.